Of all the different aspects of life on which dementia has an impact, arguably the most devastating is communication. We could even say that dementia is a sort of communication disease. If communication wasn't damaged as a result of dementia, many of the other effects it has would be much easier to manage. We communicate all the time, when we're happy, excited, fascinated, intrigued or eager, when we're feeling amorous, affectionate or moved by something, we communicate about it. If we're sad, confused, worried or angry, we tend to let other people know by communicating. A person with dementia still has all those feelings, and because dementia is such a challenging and frightening disease, they're likely to have more than their fair share of sadness, confusion, worry and anger. But the disease makes it more difficult to tell others about those feelings, and that in turn can make the feelings worse. Just when they need to communicate their needs more, they find they can't. They might need a bit more explanation of something, want to ask something, or just need a hug. Things like that can be difficult to ask for at the best of times, but dementia takes away some of the tools we use for communication, and that makes it even harder. We've all been in situations where, because we haven't said anything, people have assumed we didn't have an opinion or any particular wishes, but we did. Not communicating about an idea or feeling doesn't mean it's not there. There's a risk that a person with dementia will get discouraged from trying to communicate, and that means their needs, wants and opinions are easy to overlook. That's why it's important to find ways to keep the communication working, even when it's difficult. Even if only one person in the room has dementia, everyone is affected by this communication disease. It affects family members, friends, professional carers and all the many people we come into contact with day by day. The hairdresser, the dentist, the man in the post office, the woman at the supermarket checkout, the plumber, the postman, the taxi driver. Everyone is vulnerable. It affects how they communicate and can make them feel insecure and frustrated too. That's because communication is a two-way process. We exchange information and express our feelings and thoughts to each other. We're all in it together. Like any disease, a communication disease needs to be treated. And the good news is that because communication is so vital to us, so central to our lives, people are generally very committed to helping make it work as well as it can. Humans can be very creative when it comes to communicating, and often we just need to feel confident enough to try things out and recognise that not everything will work perfectly every time. Letting a bit of humour into the situation can help. So can finding the process interesting, making it a project to figure out how to overcome a difficulty or get messages to and fro effectively. We can get a long way if we approach the situation with kindness and patience. That way, the person with dementia doesn't feel as if they're being blamed for the problem. It's important to avoid getting into a competition for who gets heard and who has to keep quiet. Everyone needs space to express their ideas and feelings. It also helps if we understand the basic types of problem at the heart of this communication disease. One is how dementia changes a person's ability to communicate with ease. The other is how the people they communicate with can unintentionally make things worse. Let's look at each in turn. Dementia is caused by damage to the brain. The damage leads to two common problems. Firstly, 
The pathways in the brain for finding and linking up words and meanings aren't able to run as effectively. One consequence of that is that the person with dementia will find it difficult to keep up when someone talks to them. They need a little more time than they did before. Another consequence is that the person with dementia may not be able to find the words they need and may have to search around for other words to use instead, even if they're not the most accurate ones. As a result, the person they're talking to may have to do some guessing to figure out what meaning was intended. The second common problem caused by the brain damage is that the pathways used for storing information don't work as effectively. This means that recent events may not get recorded in memory. That's a problem because the vast majority of what we communicate about relates to the recent past. What we say now depends on remembering what we said last and what the other person just said. Even when we're discussing what we'll do later, it only makes sense if both of us know what we've already done. So if we don't share the same memories about what's happened recently, it takes no time at all for confusion to arise. But the brain damage itself is only part of why the communication disease is such a problem. Communication is very tied up with how we think and feel. And that's the reason why, when we're talking to a person with dementia, we can end up making things worse for them. Here are some of the ways it can happen. One, we jump to the wrong conclusions. We forget that the person with dementia wants to communicate and has things to say. Instead, we assume that because they didn't say anything, they don't have a view. Because they spoke with anger, they must be angry with us, when in fact they're frustrated about their communication problems. Because they didn't say something nice to us, they don't care about us. Two, we react badly when we find something in the communication unacceptable, Sometimes, a person with dementia may express themselves more negatively than we expected or use words that we don't like to hear. This can be because the words they really needed weren't available and they had to make do with the ones they could find. The many things they have to deal with are getting in the way of their ability to pay attention to the tone of what they say. It's just not the most important thing for them at that moment. The disease has damaged parts of the brain that usually prevent us using extreme language like swear words and racist terms. In situations like this, there's a risk that we reject the person rather than the things they've said. That will only make things worse. Three, we get frustrated about the communication problems we're facing. We're used to communication running smoothly, so when it doesn't, we can easily feel insecure and unsure what to do. That can lead to frustration. For example, because the person with dementia can't always lay down a memory of a recent event, we may find that they don't know things we expected them to know or haven't done things they were supposed to do. We have to say the same thing to them more than once and we can't figure out a way to make it stick in their memory or they don't understand what we say. Again, we're desperate to find a way of saying it that will work, but we can't find one. Getting frustrated is understandable, but it doesn't help and often makes things worse. Sometimes we'll feel guilty about being frustrated, and then we have to deal with both negative emotions at once. For we get bored or annoyed at hearing the same expressions or stories over and over again. A person with dementia will often home in on a familiar phrase or anecdote and repeat it many times. It's important to remember that these repetitions represent familiarity and security. 
we need to be tolerant and patient and continue to show interest. 5. We find it hard to see things from the other person's point of view. When communication gets challenging, it's tempting just to dig in and defend our own position. We may feel that the person with dementia isn't trying hard enough to see things from our point of view, and that's why they're making unreasonable demands. We may not be able to fathom how they've come to the opinion or decision that they've expressed. In these situations, we lose touch with our capacity to empathise and see things from a different perspective. We need to find that ability again. Patience, curiosity and humour can all help. Six, we get tired because of the effort it takes to communicate. Effective communication uses many different aspects of our mind and body. We have to pull together our knowledge, our ideas and our feelings and relate them to the words we speak or hear. That's very tiring. It's even more tiring for the person with dementia. Tiredness will tend to make us grumpy and that can make the communication work even less well. We have to notice when that's happening and acknowledge the need to step back and get things in perspective. Dealing with communication challenges like these means dealing with aspects of ourselves that we don't usually look at. We have to take charge of our emotions, question our basic assumptions and decide on our priorities. It takes energy, commitment and courage to do that. We have to be grown up, generous hearted and practical. And we won't manage it unless we look after ourselves as well as the other person. Finding the situation interesting can be a useful way of putting the negative thoughts and feelings in their place. Communicating effectively can be a project, an experiment. If something goes wrong, it's not a failure, but an interesting challenge. Why didn't that work? What could I have done differently? Seeing communication as a project can enliven us and keep us focused and positive. It opens the way to creativity and stops us taking things too seriously. We need to remember that it's natural to get frustrated when communication isn't going well because it's hard work and we don't always know how successful it's being. We need to remember that people with dementia have hopes, fears, ideas, interests and worries like anyone else but they can't always manage to communicate these things. That can make them feel very alone. They need others to help them get their ideas across. We need to remember that a person with dementia will get frustrated with themselves and their situation. But being frustrated isn't going to do them any good. It will just make them feel bad. So we need to coax them into a more positive approach. We need to remember that communication is easier when everyone's relaxed. If we can laugh together and have fun, more information will flow. We need to experiment with ways of making that happen. Research has shown that if measures are taken to improve communication, some of the other symptoms of dementia can improve as well. People feel less isolated, frightened and sad when communication's working. So what can we learn? Communication isn't only about ideas. Even if it's difficult to share new information, we can share positive feelings with a smile, a laugh, a hug. If a person feels loved and appreciated rather than a source of annoyance and problems, they'll relax more and communicate better. Finding out how best to make the communication work can become an interesting project. That approach makes it easier to cope when something doesn't go well. It makes it easier to laugh and not take it all too seriously. 
It helps keep away from the sense that someone's to blame when it's the disease which is to blame. It's helpful to think about what it's like to be the other person. If we can imagine being in their position, we can work out what they would find most helpful. It's not that difficult to recognise how, if we're struggling to express an important idea, it's hurtful when the other person tuts, turns away or gets cross. It's useful to imagine a range of different ways in which someone in our situation might respond and then choose the options that are most constructive and humane to all parties. That doesn't mean ignoring our own feelings and pretending everything's OK. That's not at all constructive or healthy. But it may mean experimenting with being a different person in situations where we tend to have a particular response that isn't working. It helps to talk to other people about what they might do in a given situation and to experiment with doing things in different ways. In particular, it's important to notice which challenges keep arising and how they typically turn out. If every conversation is ending in tears or with a door slammed or with a feeling of rejection or failure, clearly something needs to be changed. Although there are lots of potential ideas out there for how to communicate better, each situation is different and each pairing of people is different. So in the end, it'll come down to our own observation in our own situation and to our willingness to take an interest in what's happening and look creatively for solutions. A creative, interested approach can take the sting out of the problems so they hurt less annoy less and create less guilt and anxiety. We owe that to all the people we encounter and to ourselves, to everyone who is affected by dementia, the communication disease.